Hey guys, Eternally Optimistic here, starting up a new vlog series, and I'm going to be watching Digimon Frontier. Uh, you know, with uh, Digimon Tri coming out, I, I've just been so excited and so ready for new Digimon material, and you know, it, it got me to thinking, if I want to keep calling myself a, a Digimon fan, I should probably at least try to make the effort to you see see the rest of the show, because I've actually only seen up until Tamers by this point. Uh, basically, I knew four things about this show uh, going into it. First of all, uh, the, Digi the, the kids don't have partners this time around. They actually turn into the Digimon themselves. Uh, two, Frontier has one of, if not the most, underdeveloped female character in the franchise history. Three, Frontier picks up on the Ken Ichijoji tradition of the Sixth Ranger Kid, who I believe, if, I, if I'm getting my facts straight, is the brother of one of the other kids. Um, and four, this is the first Digimon iteration to completely remove adults from the equation. There are no grown-ups. And I wasn't sure what to make of these changes. Um, especially the, uh, the, the kids turn into Digimon. Um, when I first heard about this, I'm talking like years ago, when I was aware that Digimon was still happening, but uh, I wasn't really watching anymore. Uh, when I first heard that, like, oh, the kids turn into Digimon now, I thought that was the weirdest thing. Like, I always, I always liked the idea of the partners, and I was, I was just being an annoying purist. But I really do appreciate that Toei was doing something completely different. You know, instead of just trotting out the same story, they were actually mixing it up and trying to, to play with this different concepts. And I, I respect that so much, and it's a shame that it didn't go so well for them. Um, and it's a shame that interest for, for Digimon died out. But, but you know, uh, hey, if, if people like me can still come back to it and, and still be interested in it years later, then, then I guess. Anyway, <laughs> the other thing that I wasn't too sure about was um, the removal of adults from the equation. Uh, you know, Digimon, the first three series are kind of odd um, as far as fantasy adventure for kids goes, and that the, the adults are very much a part of the story, and... They believe their kids and support them and actively help them fight off the monsters. You, you know, usually when you get uh, fantasy wish fulfillment for little kids, the the adults are, are removed from the equation to make the kids, you know, the heroes of the story. Uh, but in Digimon, the, the kids are still the heroes, but the parents are very, very much supportive and, and take an active interest in their kids' lives, which I just love seeing. and. And the family dynamics are some of my favorite stuff in the first three series. Um, so it makes me kind of sad that the families, it seems, aren't going to be as big of an impact in this series. At the same time, again, I'm glad that they're doing something completely different. It's it's nice to see them doing a, doing a different story. And Takuya does have a family situation set up right in the beginning. His home life actually reminded me a lot of Davis's. Um, in that I don't I don't know if this is purely a dub change, but he seemed like a pretty normal kid, you know, with um, an average family, and seemed kind of loud and just a little bit crazy. Um, but so so um, his parents and his little sibling were given characters and at least a presence. So it's odd then that they would go right from that right into uh, the fantasy and, and no adults. But um, I th I'm sure they'll come back to that. I'm hoping. His family will have some kind of impact in the finale. The other thing the story did differently that uh, I thought was really interesting was the way they handled the call to adventure. Um, in the first series, in adventure, the kids were forcibly called. Like, they were actually dragged into the digital world. They didn't have a choice. Uh, in Zero Two, it was kind of the same thing, but not quite. Like, the, um, the, it wasn't as urgent and the stakes were not as high. Um, Tamers was the first one that, that was really different, you know, that being a, a really meta kind of tone to the show, being set in the real world where Digimon is a, a, a TV show and a card game that everyone's heard of, um, the kids didn't really receive a call. They actually had to go out and 
earn their partners instead of just being given one. And I that fascinates me. I really like the way they handled it in Tamers. Here in Frontier, it's almost like they receive the call and then they're given a choice whether they follow it or not. You know, Takuya's phone starts ringing and it's this you know, cool disembodied voice telling him to mysteriously you know, board a train if he wants to meet his destiny. But no one's forcing him. Um, like, he goes of his own will. And I almost feel like that's a, um, a shout out to people who love this kind of fantasy stuff. And, you know, Digimon in particular, but, but this kind of story in general who, who get so invested in these stories and would love nothing more than to go on an adventure themselves. Um, because Takuya and all the other kids do actively follow it and make the choice to, to get on the train to the digital world. Although one thing that really confused me was, um, at first I thought, okay, it's only going to be a handful of, you know, the kids you see here are, are going to be the ones who got the call and get on the train. Um, but Takuya gets to this, like, underground train station and there are tons of kids just milling around like, it's no big deal that they took an elevator to a non-existent floor, like, basement floor, and there's a train station that just happens to be there, and they're getting on these trains with no conductors. Like, none of them treats this like it's unusual. And that, that does sort of bother me, because Takuya and, uh, like, Takuya's really weirded out by it. The other kids are, like, they don't know what's going on, but they're more chill. But some of these kids are just, like, strolling off the train like it's no big deal, and it makes me think, okay, so in this in this universe, do kids just get on the train and go to the digital world? Is it like, is it like Oz or Narnia, where it's, it's the kids who have to improve and not necessarily the digital world that needs to be saved? I know, I know I'm thinking way too much about this, but that's what I do. And, like, like I'm worried that we're not going to get an explanation for why most of the kids were treating this like it wasn't a big deal. Um, or why, you know, those two bullies pushed Tommy onto the train and then didn't get on themselves. Because I, like, you know, adventure ho to a mysterious, you know, fantasy world. Why, why, you know, it seems to me like you just did the kid a favor. Oh, I don't, I don't even know. By the way, Tommy kind of reminded me of the, uh, the shy, quiet kid from, uh, the Polar Express. Because trains. Um... <laughs> But I, I automatically made that connection. Another thing that struck me about Frontier is the tone. Uh, Adventure in Zero Two did a really good job of kind of balancing light and dark. Tamers was really dark. And Frontier seems like it's going to be more on the light side. Um, I know there is going to be some drama just from what I've managed to pick up from the internet and, and um, that there's going to be some kind of drama between... Oh goodness. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess this up. I'm gonna make Frontier fans mad at me, but um, Koji I think is is the the ponytail kid here, or Koichi, and then his brother who would be the other one. Um, so there's gonna be some drama there, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Like Digimon is known for handling serious subjects very well, and I'm interested to see how they will handle the stuff with them. Uh, and how they'll handle it in a more light-hearted tone. Like, I really do enjoy that this seems like a completely different universe and story that they're working with here. I really like that. I'm so, um, I'm so glad that it's not just the same thing with different characters. And I'm, I'm, I wish I would have, would watched it sooner. But it's, you know, better late than never. And I really, what I loved was I really did feel like I was embarking on this great new adventure. And it just reminded me why... I loved watching the series so much the first time. You know, Digimon is, is often praised for being having very mature writing and dealing with a lot of topics that a lot of kids' shows don't deal with, like um, death, divorce, suicide, um, a lot of a lot of serious topics. And dealing and dealing with them well is is the key there. And that's why Digimon is one of the few things from my childhood that I'm still able to enjoy almost you know, pretty much, almost just as much, now that I'm an adult. Um, but at, at the same time, yeah, all that stuff is great, but it's still, at its heart, is this fun fantasy adventure, and that was exactly the feeling that I got uh, going into Frontier, and it just made me feel like a kid again, and put this smile on my face, and I'm so, I'm so happy that I'm watching it. 